Hello, it's Halifax again. In the last video, we saw how we can enable G Division with the use of uh, my wrapper, the G Division, the OpenGL G Division wrapper. So we got some uh, nice two eye rendering. Uh, unfortunately, both of them were completely flat. That's because we didn't insert any stereoscopy in any shaders. So in this video we are going to talk about how we can insert stereoscopy into a game aka doing what 3D Vision Automatic does normally. Um, this means we are going to dump all the shaders. I'm going to talk a little about uh, some general shader information like uh, the used variables and the used uniforms what's a uniform uh, and what are the predefined variables that we are going to use then how we are going to insert the actual stereoscopy into the shaders then the, stereos the stereo string magic which is found in the configuration file then shader compiling status and errors because sometimes we get those and the last step to check if all the shaders that the game or engine is using are hooked. Now, most of the thing, most of these things are done automatically, and uh, but I'm still going to show you exactly why and when is happening, so you know exactly if you run into these errors, into these things, why is happening that. So <clears throat> I'm going to close that one for the moment. Um, Last time we checked Broken Age, then we checked Wolfenstein, we saw Broken Age is rendering fine, oops, sorry, my bad, uh, is uh, rendering fine uh, with 3D Vision, we get the left eye and the right eye, but uh, as you can see the image is completely flat. So, <coughs> our log, our uh, configuration file, I don't know what that one is, this is, yeah, it's looking like this. We can enable the splice screen back. We have the log enabled, which we could still use it, but uh, yeah, at this point there isn't really any more reason. If we got this far, there isn't any reason to keep the log file enabled. And we enable enable shader dump, which basically will dump all the shaders as they are created by the game. So if you launch again, you see the game is starting, we get the same thing like before, we play a little bit around here, so it's loading all the shaders, we are exiting the game, and you'll notice a debug shader. Uh, now this one is actually my uh, fix, my comp uh, finished fix, my fix. That's why it's called my fix. You will not have this one <laughs> normally, but you'll get the debug shaders folder. And inside, we'll see a lot of files with the extension GLSL, because currently only the GLSL shader profile is supported by the wrapper, no ARB shaders, like I said in the intro. So we have the fragment, which is actually also called as the pixel shader, and the vertex shader. Now, I want to talk about the naming convention a little bit here. So, I'll make something like this to be shader file naming convention. Sorry for the caps, but I think they are necessary. So, we'll take this one and we will take the next one. Oops. Uh, and we'll say what it is. So tree equals shader program. This is the actual program or the actual shader. Now fragment it's obvious what it is. And now we have two, which is actually the fragment shader ID and one which is actually the vertex shader ID. Now, 
when you're actually creating a shader in OpenGL, you do these things. You create shader program. In our case, it will be three. You create vertex shader. In our case, it will be one. You create fragment shader. There I miss an there. Which in our case is two. You load load source code to vertex shader. Then you load source code to a fragment shader. Then you compile vertex and fragment shaders. Then you link to program the vertex and fragment shaders. So that's why we have three things. The actual program which contains both the fragment and the vertex shader. The vertex shader and the fragment which are basically independent little, uh, how should I say, blocks of code. But combined and attached to the program they actually create the shader. And now I want to talk about something that's very important. Most engines require these things which I enumerated here. However, the, the official documentation and the best practices say the next thing. After you're linking the shaders to your actual program, you need to detach the vertex and fragment shaders from the program and delete vertex shader and the de delete fragment shader. The reason <coughs> these three steps, these last three steps are uh, deemed as required is because <coughs> the um, program, the shader program already contains a copy of the vertex and the fragment shader and by keeping the fragment, the, the vertex shader in memory, without being attached to a program, basically you're eating up memory for nothing. They aren't doing anything by themselves. So by detaching, you are saying, I have created a program, I don't need these uh, shaders anymore. So I'm detaching them and I'm deleting them. After you, you delete them, the program still exists and the vertex and the fragment shader are still being used by that program basically and next when you want to use uh, the the shader you just say use shader and the program number basically and you're using that shader so <coughs> the naming convention is this Hop, sorry as you can see so this means that this is program or shader number 11 with the fragment number 10 and the vertex shader number 9 but both of them combined give you number 11 as you can see this program creates vertex 1 fragment 2 then vertex three, uh, 4 fragment 5 then vertex 7 fragment 0 this is actually blank there isn't anything in it so it didn't create it then it creates 9, 10, 12, 11 is blank, so it doesn't create it. This information will be used a little bit later and I'll explain why this numbering and this naming convention has, is basically used by the wrapper and why I have decided to use this naming convention. Because Broken Age does that. Uh, while Wolfenstein and other engines, uh, other optimized engines, they delete 
So basically, um, Broken Age does this without doing this, while o Wolfenstein and Rage and ID, uh, ID, ID software engines basically detach and delete the vertex shaders. So the next time you're actually creating a program, you'll g create the same vertex shader and the same fragment shader with the same uh, IDs 1 and 2. But I'm not going to get uh, into more depth just now. So <coughs> we have all the, the shaders. We are interested only in the vertex shaders to actually implement stereoscopy. So we can pick any of those. I'll pick this one, which is whoa. So, so as, as you can see, this, actu this is actually C code. There isn't any assembly information here. Everything is the source, the pure source code before being compiled. So there is only one function in the shader, and this is the mandatory function, which is main. Now, I really hope some of you are familiar with uh, at, uh, at least a little bit of C programming. Avoid main basically is the main function in any application. So this one is still required here, void main. Void means it doesn't return anything, it's just void. And here it calculates a lot of other stuff. So, <coughs> uh, I said above that we are going to talk general shader information. So, let's move it here. A, shade, um, a shader program is a, a little tiny bit of code or an individual program that is being loaded on your GPU. It doesn't reside on your CPU. Most of you should know this by now. So, the main game or application still runs on your CPU while the shaders are on the GPU. Because of this, you need a way to pass information between your application that runs on the CPU and the shader that runs on the, the GPU. In order to pass information, you are basically using uniforms. A uniform. A uniform has a type like float and a name. Name. So you need, you need to define this, basically. As you can see in our shader here, you have uniforms which is a matrix, which is a vector of two elements, another vector, and stuff like that. That's basically what you need to know about uniforms. Then, for the vertex shader, there is one predefined variable that's actually an output variable, and it's called gl underscore underscore position. For a vertex shader to work, this variable must exist, and something in the main function must output something or do something with this variable. For the fragment shader, there is gl color, which again is basically the color that uh, the pixel will take. So with this in mind, we are going to select GL position, and if I search here, GL position, you can find it here, GL position, you see? So GL position equals some variable multiplied by the view projection, I guess, or uh, model view projection, I don't know exactly, but it doesn't matter in this case. So basically, we need to say here we need to add stereo. Yes, we need to let the, the engine or the shader calculate its normal position and here basically we just need to add stereoscopy afterwards, which we are going to talk about in a little sec. Now, we also need to add some uniforms to this shader. So we can add the uniforms right here. And we need these uniforms. Uniforms, I, separation, you need uniform, I, meaning if it's left 
or right eye and we need another uniform named convergence Converge, convergence something like this so these are the three uniforms and here we'll use something like GL position point X because we are moving the image on the X axis equals the I blah 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 the exact formula is actually found uh, my my bad for not having it here maybe I have it in the in history is actually found in this document which I showed in the introduction and it should be exactly oh, I'm sorry for taking this long to find it. this one clip position which in our case is gel position X is plus equals meaning clip position to clip position we add this thing so is the eye sign left eye or right eye the separation the clip position W minus the convergence now W I'm W is actually the depth but it's not the Z axis every ev everything in space has three coordinates a X Y and uh, Z W is not equals to Z most of the time W equals to X divided by Z most of the time I say this is not always true depends on what calculations you're doing in the shaders this is not true sometimes it's it can be minus 1 on Z sometimes it can be only minus 1 or 0 or depends what you want to render but most of the times W is X by Z uh, multi uh, divided by Z so basically the stereoscopic if I'm going to copy this one copy the stereoscopic string which you can find exactly here the stereo string if I paste the one from there you can see it's exactly the same one see I'm not going to tell you and talk about why this works and <laughs> what's the, the logic behind it because that's not the point of this uh, video but it works so suffice for you to know that it works so now <coughs> back to inserting uh, we, we see here and I can close this one so what do, do we require we say vertex stereo injection we need to set this on true we want to inject stereoscopy enable failure info if enabled will display all the vertex shader in which the stereoscopy wasn't inserted we'll keep that one to false for the minute then we need to say the inje inje injection point sorry the injection point if you look on our vertex it's actually this one so basically from this string we need to find something that is the same in all of the shaders so we can see that this shader is saying GL position equals something if I'm opening another shader we can see GL positions equal something and so on and so on so basically we need to say that our insertion string is GL position equals and the wrapper will automatically find this line and append the information or actually the stereo string after it so then we need the uniform in injection point the uniform injection point if you look we say we want to add the uniforms at the top so we need to find define med p so define med p and that's it basically that's all there is to it now the stereo string most of the times you don't need to modify it however some games need uh, different modification here 
and I'm not going to talk about why I, why would you want to use a different stereo string if you read an NVIDIA documentation probably you will find why uh, my uh, broken edge uh, fix features an uh, automatic um, convergence adaptation or a swap based on the distance of the actual action from the camera so <clears throat> sometimes like you you see in some games if you if the camera goes from a, a far, far, far position to a very close close up position the convergence is the same and your eyes will basically bleed because the separation is so big you can't focus by using an automatic conversion based on the the actual position of the camera from the the scene you can change the convergence on the fly so if you want to do something like that you need to insert those things those calculations in the stereo string i'm not going to uh, to, to talk any more uh, about this one, I'm going to show you what is my string. I'm not going to talk about how I came up with it and stuff like that. But I, I, I will paste it here in a, in a couple of seconds, just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So <clears throat> uh, the wrapper features three injection points. At the moment, we are just going to use one, and we are going to say enable failure info on true. So yes, enable failure info on true. We want to start the game. We are starting the game. And wow, you can actually see that the game now renders in proper 3D or proper stereo 3D. However, man, that's interesting. However, you can see everything is working very nice. You can see everything is 3D, you can see, continue, you can play, and if you look, it's, you can't actually see it, but if you look here, you see the separation is so big, that basically this image looks completely, um, completely in the screen, you can see here, exactly here the separation is very big between these two so there is no pop-up effect there is only push effect push into depth effect <coughs> now the moment I'm going to increase the convergence which is not increasing that is what we are oh yes now it is increasing the moment I'm increasing the convergence, so I have something like a nice, see, something like here is, see, you get some very weird things, see, now it's, uh, uh, the both the images line up perfectly, so it looks completely flat, as you can see, right? in this point, but we also lost the menu, there is no menu we can't see the mouse, we can't see anything <coughs> so because of this we need more shader manipulation See, basically we want the UI to stay fixed and we still want to be able to increase the convergence without getting a perfect flat image like we do it like we do now but that will be for the next video in which basically we are going to talk about um, about how we are going to find a shader, how we are going to find a shader responsible for something, and etc. etc. But before we close this video, I still want to show you something because I promised we are going to talk about shader compiling status and errors and checking if all the shaders are hooked. Now, enable failure info 
which will display all the vertex shaders in which the stereoscopy wasn't inserted is set to true which means that in this game all the shaders were hooked I'm going to show you uh, in Wolfenstein this isn't the case just in a second but compiling st uh, status and errors this is actually easy to show because for example here if I just make a tiny mistake in writing something for example and I'm going to launch it again I will get a shader compile failed and we, it will give me the whole information this is the content of the shader that's the line which I want to add basically and it says out, uh, error output number uh, at line 17 which this is line 17 if you count syntax error unexpected identifier expecting either a comma or semicomma, uh, a semicolon at token UV varying which is UV varying so basically here it was expecting a, either a semicolon or a uh, column so um, yeah and now it will exit so by changing it back and running it oops sorry again now it will work this is done per shader so not f for one shader or for one thing this this uh, check is basically done on all shaders either you load them either you change them either you insert stereoscopy or you manually compile them but those uh, about those other features we are going to talk a little bit uh, in another video I promised that I'm going to show you the other function which is in s I'm, I'm going to use Wolfenstein again Wolfenstein the new order I'm going to open this one so here that's the debug one here I'm going to set true now I'm not going to dump all the shaders again but this is uh, actually uh, the, the real in injection point and that's the string that I'm going to uh, inject and the uniforms will be injected after the version uh, I'm going to put it on true because I want to show you something else or actually no, I'm going to leave it on false for the second to see you something very important so I'm going to launch it uh, yes sorry about that one <coughs> and it loads yet I forgot to enable that function if I enable that function it will display me all the shaders in which this string is not found and this string the stereo string is not applied and I can see that uh, shader injection failed on shader program 6 this is the content of the shader I see I f it found version so it added the uniforms but it doesn't find gel position point W equals because this shader is gel position equals in position so there is no gel position point W in, inside here and this is 6 then I get 51 gel position is 0 it's a vector 4 of 0 then again 0 then in, what's in gets out then here in 60 there are more interesting things calculated something with textures and stuff like this this is actually a very interesting shader to look at then 61 again this is basically a pass-through shader what gets in gets out so on this type of shaders normally you don't want to insert stereoscopy because uh, most of the time this has to do with post process which is on the entire screen or uh, uh, basically entire screen processing or drawing or stuff like that so see 
everything is basically the same. This, this one is something to do with x coordinates x y x y. So, but the GL position is actually the input position. So, from the vertex point of view, this is again a pass through vertex. Only the the only difference here that is that is calculating some texture coordinates for something. Again, the same thing. Again, pass through, pass through, pass through, pass through, and so on. Now, if you want to see what happens if you inject all the shaders, basically you can go here and say GL position equals. Sorry. So this is the new thing that we want to to insert. And on the the second one is again on version. So the second point is again on version. So yeah, we are we'll are we are going to add it here. So yes, a lot of shaders. And the game starts. Okay, so we added the second injection point. We are going to run it again, and we see. Do we get any other uh, missing shaders? No, apparently not. So now all the shaders are completely hooked, and stereoscopy is inserted in every single shader that exists in the game, and we get this one. So far, nothing, ch not, nothing changed. However, if I try to increase the convergence, things will go weird. See, things will, things get very weird. I don't know if you notice it, but uh, yeah, they do get very weird. Uh, so. <coughs> Most of the time, like I, like I, I uh, showed it before, now here you, if you leave it like this, something will break, you need to specify something and null is the thing that normally must be specified. So if I leave it back and I run it again, now in these shaders, this type of shaders normally don't need to be uh, um, stereo converted. It's just a pass through. So in this case, probably the in position is already calculated in stereoscopic or doesn't need to be calculated. However, this shader number 16, this one needs this one needs to be probably needs, I'm not sure, probably needs to be stereo converted while the others don't, see, just pass through shaders basically so keep that in mind oops, sorry, now I need to close it and now it's continuing rendering and so on and so on so basically this is about how you can add stereoscopy and get something rendered in 3D. Now you can't really see it in, uh, in um, 3D Vision Discover, but after you do these steps, you'll get what normally you get with 3D Vision Automatic. So 3D Vision Cakes, you get some uh, nice stereoscopic rendered images, and prob probably a lot of shaders are uh, not working quite as expected. So, <coughs> with this in mind, I'm going to close this video and I'll see you all in the next video where we are going to talk about how we can find shaders, how to find a shader that is responsible for something like finding a shadow shader or the UI shaders or stuff like that. Then how we are going to use the real-time compiling shader and um, yes, yeah, some other things regarding the sh uh, comp uh, shader compiler and uh, stuff like that. Useful for debugging and finding a shader and modifying a shader and fixing a shader. So until next time, cheerios!